this is the NASCOM 2. Uh, this is a computer that, uh, not the computer, but the same kind of computer that is the first machine that I actually saw um, and had the opportunity to, to play with. Um, slightly different, the one that I had or had access to had it was in the, made in a box uh, and you could see the boards inside and you could see the LEDs blinking as, as the different operations occurred. Um, but this one's been made in a proper plastic case and looks a little bit more professional than the one I was using. Um, but the thing is, you never see two NASCOMs really looking the same. We've got, I don't know how many, half a dozen machines, NASCOMs, uh, and no, none of them look the same. Some of them are in wooden boxes, uh, we really clutched together with some dodgy keyboard. Other ones are in nice cases, others are just the bare boards. Uh, they were just made to you know, get them working and that was about it. This one was working, we had it on display and Jeremy was doing a talk about this particular line of machines and how things progressed and said that people sort of made these machines themselves, they were kit form machines, um, and that some of them didn't work. And just after he said it didn't work, because he'd taken the lid off and shut it, closed it down again, walked on and it went bang and, uh, and didn't work. Um, and uh, the reason for that is we've got quite a cludge of things in here. So again, this is a little bit like the Altair. This is something, a machine that you sort of built and then you modified, you made it better. So underneath the hood here, we've got a whole mess of stuff. And what happened was where we had it connected out to the monitor of our composite video, when the case come down again, we managed to short the supply out. Um, so the power supply over here has got a nice little burn mark where it took it out. So you've got to fix that and that'll be okay. But yeah, so you've got the original board, which is under there. Um, it has a 48K memory expansion on it. Um, and then on here, uh, we've got some, uh, a color video adapter on it to actually give a NASCOM color, which is quite amazing. Um, so yeah, that's how, and that's gone too, Z80 based. And they were actually, you know, again, pretty, pretty impressive machines for the time. I used to play a game on it called Keys of Kral, um, kind of this uh, sword and sorcery game. You go around the maze and collect the elixirs and kill the monsters and stuff. But just to have this stuff on this little tiny black and white screen, a little bit like this one here, um, was amazing. You know, I was like eight at the time hadn't really seen anything else. Like, very shortly after I managed, oh, my dad bought us a, a grandstand pong thing and that was brilliant. But that was the first I saw and it was, seeing computers controlling TVs or screens, it sounds crazy, it's really hard to get this across to anybody that didn't experience it at the time, but it was like a new thing, a, a completely revolutionary. Um, so to have this computer screen controlled by me my character was moving where I wanted to go, and then you know he showed me a little bit about how to uh, load the operating systems and things like this. It was just mind blowing. So, what, what, what era would this have been then? Is this seven, are we talking seventies? Yeah, this is about seventy seven. Um, I think I got access to it in about seventy eight, maybe seventy nine, something like that. Um, and um, yeah, and, it, and again, it was sort of the domain of enthusiasts, electronics engineers, people that had the ability to put this stuff together. Um, Quite a few people tried that didn't have those skills and failed. Uh, you know, you end up paying quite a lot of money for these machines. You know, these, these were several hundred pound to buy in kit form. Um, and uh, yeah, and end up with a big box of nothing. Uh, and, uh, and had to try and find somebody else who could try and repair it for them. But um, these things were, for me, the very dawn of it all and, you know, set me on a trajectory that uh, ends up with a computer museum at the end of it. <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of trajectory that is. It's not that great. <laughs> The other thing that strikes me, I certainly remember back in the late 70s, we would only have one TV in the house. Yeah. So, of course, you'd be sitting there in the lounge in front of your parents' big telly, <laughs> getting in their way. Yeah, that's what I did with my Vic 20 uh, you know, later on. Yeah, and, and they hated me for it because it was getting in the way of whatever it was, Poldark at the time or whatever it was, you know? And, and, and I was getting grumpy because I couldn't use my computer when they were watching the things they wanted to watch. Uh, yeah, it was. It was one TV. Um, my uncle had you know, their TV downstairs and he had this in his own room with his monitor. This was big time stuff, it was great. Most people at that time didn't have that kind of luxury. It was Dallas or the computer. Yeah, basically. I mean, she finds out that her daddy... You know, I'll go for the computer every time, but, but the rest of the family didn't quite see it that way. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you end up getting those little black and white portable TVs and that become your monitor. So for things like the ZX81 here, we've got the black and white portable on that. And it's kind of a bit fuzzy and raggedy around the edges, but it was usable. They were the, the monitors of choice, I suppose, for most people in their home computers. So quite a few of us had home computers that were colour, but really only saw black and white for most of the time because we were relegated to the dining room and a, and a little black and white telly. But, uh, but hey, at least you still had your computer and you could do what you wanted to do. 
He thought he might sell a few of them, but ended up selling huge numbers of them to a, a bunch of computer enthusiasts, basically. And it, actually, not so much computer enthusiasts. They weren't at that time. They were electronics enthusiasts. They didn't know they were computer enthusiasts until this used. thing had hit. So, um, for beginners, yeah, all purpose, uh, and, uh, symbolic sort of instruction code. Uh, and, uh, I've got a feeling that was kind of retrofitted to the word basic rather than the other way.